right, what is going on, guys? It is the Chasing Waypoints podcast, episode number 24. That's right, we are 24 episodes deep on this one. I don't even know how to say it. I don't know. Working on our, almost working on our 25th. But, super stoked with today's guest. Guy happens to know a little bit about making some horsepower. Particularly in the orange department. So, hope everybody's having a good week. Getting out there. Making stuff happen. Doing some rally. Hopefully doing some rally stuff. Oh, I turned that party down. Ding. So, looking forward. Looking forward to the weekend. Baja 500 coming up this weekend. Can't wait. To see what we have got in store for that one. I know my brother's looking forward to it. He is down there racing, ready to go. All right. So we got the link over to our guest. This week's guest is none other than Chris Parker, Rottweiler Performance. So got a chance to talk to Chris down at the Sonora Rally. A little bit about this badass bike that he built, Husky 501. Wes was riding that thing around, putting it through its paces. Very impressive bike build. Also running the Tower 1. I want to talk a little bit about the rally tower setup that he had on this bike. It was very, very awesome. A ton of stuff, but my bike's little by little turning into a Rottweiler build. Trading parts out, swapping and putting some of Chris's stuff in there because, well, it's just rad. So I got the link over to him here. It'll probably just be a second to get him in here. But super pumped. Turn down the party a little bit more. So for those of you playing the home game, I don't know if you know this, but we do have a Rally Kazakhstan going on. But, well, but instead of talking to that, I'm going to turn this thing down. How about we talk to Chris Parker? Chris, you there? What's happening? <laughs> I am. Hey, hey, what's up, dude? Uh, how you doing? Good. You know? Does everything sound okay on my end? I'm in the machine shop, machine triple clamps. <laughs> nice. So, I don't know if you can hear the machines in the background, but yeah, hopefully we... not. If, if so, I'll move. Yeah, we can, we can hear them a little bit. All Let's right, can... I'm going to move. All right. I'm just setting some tools. Yeah. Okay. How you doing? Nice. Thanks for having Good. me. Good. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited. Definitely get yeah, me too. Find out a little me bit too. more. It's an honor. <laughs> I know. Awesome. Okay. Honor is mine. I was doing, talking to Chris Parker, right? The the KTM horsepower guy. Last I checked. <laughs> With the dyno charts to prove it, which is awesome. Yeah. I I think that's that's probably even, one. Of even the though cool. I even though I make them all up. Oh, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> according according to our favorite forum jockeys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you went to school to to figure out how to run the dyno, and then right behind it, you went to a Photoshop school to learn how to change the dyno charts. Exactly. Okay, exactly. got it. Yeah, all you you don't even need the dyno; you just need Photoshop. Oh, that's okay, all. got it. That's all. <laughs> Photoshop is good for at least fifteen horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> and 14 or so 14 ish yeah. and people yeah. thought stickers were was that <laughs> yeah <laughs> nice so triple camp triple clamps for the uh 790 yeah we've been working on those for about seven months now um and we're we're kind of at the last stretches of, of the production and there's a lot of setups a lot of uh, you know tooling and processes and and things and and uh we're kind of pretty much the end of it we're in production now it's a lot of excitement for them you know and the idea for us is we're you know we're not known like x trig or or you know some of these other companies we're not known for triple clamps mm -hmm. so the idea is if we do release something like this it has to be absolutely so perfect that you know i don't want people to get a hold of a product of mine and look at it and go oh that was that that's nice rottweiler decided to try yeah. it, that's you know what i mean it, we don't do that anything we do it has to you know i have to basically climb to the top of that mountain plant plant my flag and said bring it on <laughs> yeah. so right. so they're 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 coming out there the idea was we spent a lot of time and a lot of money and 
and trying to make these things absolutely perfect. And uh, I'm really proud of them. So we've nice. been working really hard on them. So, well, I, yeah, I've seen the spy shots and I've seen the little the little intricacies and details and stuff that you're doing. And I think that's I mean spot on. Like you're you're not just trying to copy what you know KTM did and then just make it out of billet. Like you're improving upon it. No, that matter of fact, I was talking to the uh, I, I know the uh, the head of. Uh, PGNA, which is parts gear and accessories, and I, I started sending him some some spy photos, and he says, you know, they, there's been some rumblings in KTM, you know, that the 790 is popular enough that, that they should make some some power parts, triple clamps, and I said, well, I beat you to it. Why don't you just buy mine? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> He's yeah. like, well, we have to go through a mountain. You you probably have to send us about 50 of them. We'd have to crush them and do this and do that. And he's like, I'm. I, he, he was actually like, he's like, I'm actually kind of jealous of you guys because. Because KTM is so corporate, they mm-hmm. have. I mean, just to get to sell any of these power parts, it takes. I mean, w- everyone knows who's tried to buy power parts when they have a brand new model. You can't get them for like a year. It's kind of a joke, yeah. and they have to go through so many layers of bureaucracy just to get a part mm-hmm. out there. And and the U.S. KTM and the U.S. used to have a lot more freedom. They would just you know go, go out to vendors like us and Arc Levers and whoever else and go, hey can you just make what you're already making orange and sell it to us in quantity? And they could do that. And, you know, Austria being Austria, put the kibosh to that and mm-hmm. put 50 more layers in front of that, you know, so. Yeah, how modulated. Just, and, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so it's just a lot easier for us to get things to market, you know, and, and we that's the beauty of being aftermarket is you can kind of, you can beat the factories to nearly everything, which they hate, but it, it is what it is. Well, and then, and then you, you do a little R&D. Just a little, a little bit. Just a, a little. little bit. Just a little. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that helps. I mean, uh, I know I, I'm still impressed, and uh, I'll be honest, I was a little bummed that I didn't see Wes on the 790 uh, at Sonora. I wanted to see yeah. it up close. <laughs> I was I was real bummed, and and it, you know, a, a lot of the 790 development kind of sprang from that because you know we went down and did that, and and. Fortunately, we, we, we got through the race. I mean, I was amazed at the bike. I mean, it, 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 it took everything West just down, and he's not easy on bikes uh, at all, you know. And, I, and uh, I'm not entirely sure I mean that as a compliment. <laughs> he's, 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 so he can know, be expensive, but he can be good. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's expensive, man. He broke two subframes on the Husky. That was that, that cost me a thousand bucks. But uh, no, he, he, you know, he's, he's fast, but it, you know, he, he just goes through stuff. You know, when I raced, I kind of go around stuff, you know, but that's not always the fastest way he goes through stuff and, and, you know, but the, the bike lived, but you know, we, we learned from that and, and I turned around and I put hundreds of hours into this race bike. I mean, I, I built, I said, I'm going to come back next year with the, the baddest nav tower you've ever you've seen, you know, because I showed up down there with something I threw together real quick, and we had some issues with it. And I said, I promise you I'm going to have the baddest nav tower you, you've ever seen. And I spent thousands on, on all these parts and designed these billet pieces and made all this stuff. And, and then, you know, I was like, you know, what else can we do to make this thing? And I really wanted to show up to this rally and a number of other events, you know, with this 790 or 890, whatever, you know, was available, available at the time. And just knock everyone's socks off. Just like, you know, come out with something, you know. And so racing that last year, you know, part of the reason we race, if that question gets asked at, at, at any time during this, this podcast, is because it just breeds this development. It breeds these ideas. You'll see something. You're like, okay, let's do this. Let's do this. And, and it kind of pushes you into development, whereas people or companies that aren't racing – you know, they just kind of, uh, what should we make? What should we do? You know, when you're racing, you've got a purpose for what you're doing. You've, you've got a blueprint, you know, it's like, okay, I have this issue. Now I can fix a real world problem. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I put a ton of time into this thing and then I get this phone call, you know, that Wes, he's like, Hey, uh, I kind of want to race a small bike this year. And I'm like, God damn it. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, Oh God, you know, and, and, and I'm like, uh, okay. And I was, I was a little heartbroken because I just put so much time into this thing. And, and it's the, the, the adventure bikes, they, they, they do get a lot of attention. And he, mm-hmm. he was nine seconds off the podium last year on a freaking adventure bike, on yeah. a 790, the new model. I mean, we, you're like the first per- person no one talks about, fourth place. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh. because it was an adventure bike, we got on the cover of Cycle News. We got in six different Maxima double-page ads. 
Maxima Oils. I mean, we, you know, we had a bunch of magazine interviews, so it was very cool. Mm -hmm. And it has that cool factor, yeah. you know. But this year he said, you know, I, I just think I could be more competitive on a smaller bike. And so I thought I was a little bummed, and I thought about it for a couple of days, and I really enjoyed racing with him. And I called him back, and I said, I'll tell you what. If I build two Huskies, you want to race with me again? And he, it, I said, go talk to, you know, whoever you got to talk to about it and come back to me. And he came back and he said, yeah, let's do it. I said, it's got to be a Rottweiler team. It's a Rottweiler, you know, mm -hmm. the whole the whole thing. And, and he said, yeah, no problem. Um, so his dad supports him from Cyclops. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he, he kind of helps out with the entries a little bit. So there's some Cyclops involvement. And and uh, and uh, so we, we decided to do it. And I said, you know, if you don't do as well as you did last year, I'm going to make fun of you. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and he's like, yep, yep, okay. Well, this year it happens to be that four factory teams showed up instead of one. So It sounds uh, like excuses it, already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so no. his, his chances of, of getting that podium were, were you know. Stacked were against them, yeah. Stacked a little bit. Yeah, so, I mean, he still did fantastic. I mean, we were one of the first couple of, of quote-unquote sports. We're not really sportsmen. We're not factory. We're sort of in between. Mm hmm and uh you know but uh you know he gave it all all he could but it, yeah there is the cool factor racing the 790 because everyone just like the hell was that i didn't know they entered trophy trucks in this race and then it goes by you know and <laughs> Dude, the thing so just what, oh uh, yeah i when when i'm having trouble sleeping i always i always go back uh yep oh, sorry that i always i always go back and and watch that video i think it was where you guys debuted that bike i want to say it was at like uh parker yeah, and yeah. there's that video where he comes in. You guys check the bike really quick, and then he turns around and then just rips up this wash. Oh yeah, I was it's like, like oh my god! I, I kind of equated it to you know in, in like in Star Trek where the thing it, it it snaps out like a rubber band, then it goes poof and it's gone. It was a bit like that, you know. He just goes ah, boom, and he was just gone. It was fun to watch. It's it's of, crazy. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> It, the the sound versus how much speed it's actually gaining is just they're they're not proportionate. No, the, and it's 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 this weird window that opens up with those things where they accelerate really fast and they don't break very well, and that's kind of a bad combination. Yeah. Um, so it's like they're, they're only get, about a, a one and a half bikes compared to what you know the five hundred one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it gets up there so fast. Um, you know, but the braking, you know, if you can only figure out how to get, how to, you know, get the thing to break better, but traction is traction is traction. You just, you just, the thing just, yeah. you just lock him. I mean, he, yeah, I can't like, it's funny to watch the GoPro videos because he doesn't like wearing GoPros for whatever reason. I par partially, I think it's because he doesn't want pe people to see the mistakes he makes, but, <laughs> but you'll see him like he'll blow corners because they, they come up so fast. He's not used to it. Yeah. You know, and I, I, when we we watched some of the the footage at Parker, and he just he he just kept blowing these corners, and then this guy behind him would make the corner, and he would correct, come back, and then he'd be around the guy in seconds. You know, and the <laughs> poor guy would just get rocked to death. You know, every and time that that big giant one hundred and fifty Dunlop on the back. You know, the 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 nine hundred eight just destroying everything in its wake. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd get past him, then they'd hit the next corner, and, and then he'd, he'd blow that corner again. He, now, he doesn't do this all the time, I have to clarify. He's probably going to listen to this at some point. But, you know, we did see this, and then the guy behind him would make the corner, and he'd pass him back. And, uh, you know, there's, there, 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 yeah. there's actually been uh, uh, a borderline fistfight because of uh, him passing somebody on that bike and the ensuing golf balls that uh, come at you at life speed. So yeah. we got some stories there. <laughs> well, we don't want to go full controversial yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, we'll go there. There's stories. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and if you're lucky enough to be in the group when the stories are being told, then few in the proud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. It turned out well. It turned there was out no yeah. bloody noses. Yeah. Just some broken, so some broken teeth, maybe, but no, and, and not not from not from fists, but uh, yeah. no, it's all good. Couple stones. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, so once you wrap your head around, what well, you know? Okay, we're gonna race this thing on a small bike. Uh, let's talk about that bike build. Uh, first, you you went with the Husky Five Hundred One. Uh, was there the a particular reason why that one versus the KTM Five Hundred? Linkage. Okay. 
really that's that that was the deciding factor. I've been curious about the bikes for quite some time anyway. I mean, Huskies are just you know, from the the approach of a Husky is they're supposed to be a premium bike. That's that's they're kind of like you know KTM is ready to race, which is you know there's a big asterisk that I always attach to that. But <laughs> there's uh, they and they have you know they have the the gas gas, which is uh, you know, they're kind of sort of hooligan. They're going after the hooligan crowd with that. You know, they're a little lower price point. And then they've got the Huskies, which are more of a refined KTM, you know, where it's got the linkage, it's got some better components and, and so on and so forth. And and a lot of it was the linkage. You just, you can only race about nine tenths w- with a PDS shock. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't go 10 tenths with it. It just doesn't get you, it doesn't handle the big hits you know, the high speed hits. And so, um, it, it, we, we chose that bike basically from, because of the linkage. Gotcha. So, and, we, and I had heard that was, I've heard the linkage a couple of times and then the same, like you're saying, you know, this, it, that Husky was kind of geared towards more of the premium, premium stuff, the finishes, the suspension, things like that. Like they're trying to, mm-hmm. to hold that up a little higher. So, so now you got two of these bikes sitting in the shop on the stands and, what is the uh, the parts list on these things? I mean, I saw Arrow, I saw I saw all sorts of I just piles of parts. Well, you know, we we let me I'm, I'm going to look up my uh, my hashtag notes here. Oh, and, and <laughs> oh now we're getting serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the. I mean, it's the, these are all the hashtags that we use, and it just kind of reminds me of what we put on there. So, essentially. Okay, we went through, I mean, we'll start, I guess we'll start with the motor. Mm-hmm. Um, the motor, I mean, we, we did basically an aero exhaust, full exhaust. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I really, I, I got to say, I really like about the Husky is they did finally split the, the exhaust in the center. There is a slip. So you can actually get the head pipe off with just springs in, in seconds, which is awesome. So if you ever mash one, you know, it's or you have to remove a shock or something, it's just a lot easier to take apart. So that was an improvement over the 501 that I really liked. Um, but we, we, we basically, we, you know, we dropped in a recluse, um, core EXP, not the auto clutch. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's just a stronger clutch, you know, about 15% more, more, uh, surface area on the, on the fiber pads and, or the fiber plates. And then, uh, uh, aero exhaust. And then, um, basically we, we worked with, uh, being that we have the dyno, we got an Athena get and we invested in the advanced software that you can get for that, where you can actually tune it. Um, and so we basically got the bike, you know, we're going to be moving down into these bikes. Um, we're not certainly not moving on from adventure bikes or, or their street versions whatsoever. We're just expanding in, into the, the enduro stuff because there's a lot of crossover. Mm-hmm. So this was a great opportunity for us to kind of like showcase what we can do with these bikes as well. Cause that's, I've been racing these since, you know, for about half my life, these size bikes, it's really kind of my thing. I, my background is score. So. Mm-hmm. You know, it's nothing new to us. Um, it's just the adventure market I just kind of fell into, and yeah. and uh, there was a big gap in in the adventure market of, of tuners and people actually modifying these things in the way that we are. Mm-hmm. So we, we we kind of chased that down, and, and we're still heavy on that. But we wanted to also expand into these bikes, so we got the um, we put the Athena Get on there with the with the tuning software and got it on the dyno and basically just um, just tuned and tuned and tuned and built. West two tunes. Um, there we got the we running the map switch, and we ran on map one is a power map, and then for rally, because we didn't have, you know, the the eight gallons of fuel packed all over the thing, or I don't know how many liters that is. I'm supposed to talk liters when it comes to rally, but uh, um, we basically made an economy map as well. So it basically burned a bit leaner, you know, somewhere in the low 14 uh, to one air fuel ratio. Mm-hmm. Um, which burns uh, less fuel, makes a couple less horsepower, but burns less fuel um, on the days we really had to stretch it out. Um, and so that's basically all we did with the motor. We didn't really, you know, when I was racing Baja, we'd get into the transmission and we'd, we'd isotropic polish the gears and balance the cranks and do all kinds of exotic coatings and things. And, yeah. and as we grow into this, we'll probably do a bit more than that. Um, it's kind of diminishing returns mm-hmm. as far as labor and costs go. You know, you you... You can gain a ton. I mean, just by yanking the reeds out of the thing, it's eight horsepower to the tire. Um, just by pulling the intake reeds. Yeah. Um, we verified that. There's been a couple other guys that verified. They, they claimed ten. We saw eight just by pulling it out. It's literally a, a two-minute thing. You don't even have to re, uh, 
map the thing. Yeah. So a lot of horsepower was there. So that's the only thing that was missing is, is pulling the reeds out. Gotcha. Um, so we went from 42 horsepower, and by the time we were done, we had 56 to the tire. So a good, healthy 14 horsepower yeah, that's uh, to the tire. Yeah. The crank is probably 16, 17, which is substantial. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's everywhere. Um, I wish I could show you the, the, the curves, but there, there was no trade anywhere. It was just gains across the... It was really fun to, to see on the dyno. Yeah. Um, but um, so we did that, and then and uh, um, uh, and then obviously we changed the gearing and made it a little bit taller. I went a little bit taller than normal. Um, I kind of went with a Baja gearing, mm-hmm. and uh, Wes struggled with it. It was a 1547, which is what we used on the Hondas in Baja, and it seems to work with the KTMs pretty well. Um, he struggled holding six gear in the sand, um, but uh, but that was okay. He said it worked out pretty well because when he got on the hard pack, he could just wind the thing out in six, and it would do a hundred plus easy. Thanks. Um, so and Wes will hold it there for a long, long time. <laughs> it's just, just so there's no yeah. question. <laughs> yeah, it will sit there as live. long as possible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, we did that with the motor, did uh, uh, the gearing, like I said, aero exhaust. And aero was, you know, a lot of guys on these bikes, you know, there's FMF, you know, and all these different brands, and you just can't get the stuff right now. But aero, I think, in this market is is largely kind of unknown a little bit. Um, I, I have to say they don't do a very good job on their website of, of, of identifying what fits what. There's a lot of crossover they're not aware of. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to try to help them with that and, and get them, because it's high-quality stuff. It's really nice. Yeah. Um, you know, we're really impressed with the mufflers they sent us. Um, outside of that, uh, we you know we, we do some stuff that, that that some other people can't, where we'll actually weld the radiators, um, we'll weld the spigots to where you know if there's ever um, any kind of spill that, that bends the radiators. Now we're running the big IMS tank that wraps around them, so they're pretty safe. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll go through and weld the radiators, which which actually in, in 2006 was the reason we. I, the, my team finished the Baja 1000 because we, we had crashed that bike and bent the radiator up into the motor and, and I had welded the spigots um, and welded the radiators and it literally just the hose held onto the spigot and it bent it over so far because it got pushed up into the motors yeah. so far that if, it, if we had not welded them it, it would have just unzipped like a Ziploc bag it just opened up dumped all the coolant yeah. um, and the very reason that we finished that year was because of that or else we would have just we would have been done yeah. and uh so big believer in that, and we have the facilities to do all that. You know, we have a high-end fab shop uh, in our shop here, so we welded the radiators. Um, what do we, what else do we do? We went through. I'll talk about the nav stuff at the end because I think that's the stuff you were interested was, in. Exactly, and I was and I was waiting for you to go. Oh, and then the and I was going. Nope, that goes at the end. Yeah, I'll wait for that. That was a fun build, but. You know, we threw on some, uh, uh, Alex from Conflict brought down some MX Tech suspension that was really trick, had some really exotic coatings on it, and lots of, you know, dual high speed and low speed compression and rebound, and, and uh, it's, it's, it, they're so trick that there's, a, I'm looking at it right now, and there's actually like a, like a little cartoon of a, a spaceman on the side of it, which is, which is. <laughs> Here, we just made you know? this badass suspension, what, you know, it's missing a spaceman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come back to me when that's on there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And but it uh Wes really liked it. Um it worked it worked well. Um you know, had some Kashima coated forks and DLC lowers and 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 they actually claimed that they were a pound lighter a piece mm-hmm. from exo- from some exotic internals and I was like, yeah, right. Well, I when I pulled them off to send them back, I actually took them over to the scale and weighed them against a, a pair of uh very expensive cone valve forks and and sure enough they were exactly a pound less per fork. Wow. So whatever they're doing in there, they're, they're running some lightweight components. Um, yeah. I, I didn't believe it when I heard it. I thought it was uh, some hocus pocus, but it was real. I mean, actually, you pick them up. My God, these are light. But we did weigh it. Yeah. Um, so they're about a pound lighter. Um, that suspension worked real well. We ran Dunlop tires, mm-hmm. um, MX, or, I'm sorry, AT81s, the four ply, mm-hmm. and then uh, we ran a um, we ran a MX12 in the dunes one day. That was a bit of an experiment, and that's like a basically a knobby paddle tire. Okay. Um, heard great things about them, but Wes had to do about 12 miles of hard pack just to get to the dunes. And in hindsight, you know, he said they did work better in the dunes. They did really work really well in the sand. He said, but the 12 miles of hard pack was sketchy. Nah. So <laughs> he said, Swapping. I would have traded. Yeah, he says I, w- I would have traded. Uh, you know the the advantage in the dunes a little bit for a little bit 
more of a positive 12 miles in the hard pack. Um, but they're not too bad. They did, you'd think they would chunk up the way they are. They're just like big knobby paddles, but uh, they're kind of neat. But they're really meant for sandy motocross tracks. Gotcha. Um, we ran W wheels with uh, A60 rims. Um, mm-hmm. So we just kind of, you know, they're a little bit heavier, but we, you know, we wanted the good spokes, the good, you know, Han hubs. Um, John Anderson over there at W wheel uh, custom made them all for us. Nice. Um, and, uh, it, you know, this, you got to have good wheels because West destroys those too. <laughs> um, I have five sets of 790 wheels that literally have 200 and something miles on them a piece. We swapped a set each day last year, yeah. and all of them look like they have about 5,000 miles on them in the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jeez. like, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Wes, I'm just curious. Did you miss any rocks, or did we get them all? Yeah. yeah it was the exactly. waypoints that you were supposed to get all, not the rocks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's listening to this. I will never be able to get him on the show now by the end of this. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Oh, they're too, yeah, they're done. So yeah. uh, we fortunately, the, this this set of A60s, they weren't too bad. And, uh, you know, the rest of them, uh, not, not too bad. Not too bad. We kind of planned on just running a couple sets of the stock ones. And then if there was any damage to them, just rebuilding it. But uh, no, this, this, these particular sets we ran, we ran about four sets in this rally. We changed them every day, and, and they're good. But nice. uh um, so yeah, W wheels on there, uh, custom made wheels. And then, um, we ran in the front, we ran, um, a Galfer oversized tsunami rotor, um, with, with a, uh, a Brembo billet, uh, single piece caliper. Okay. Um, so, you know, the, the, the Galfer tsunami rotors are just, you know, they're larger in diameter. So, you know, better braking, better cooling being the wave. And, and they're just about the best thing you could put on them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, Wes was really happy with those. Uh, put Samco hoses on them. They're just higher quality silicone hoses. Um, looking at it, let's see. Let me. We're, I gotta you check my my list. I don't want to belabor this too much, but uh, yeah. C Cod set up seat. Uh, these, I mean, you know, I kind of want to mention these guys anyway because they help us out. But uh, um, this this is legitimate stuff. You know that we run on a rally. West. You know he asked for the the seat concept seat, the comfy the comfy seat. So his uh, his tushy was. Uh, you know, not 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 sore yeah. at the end of the the deal. Um, let's see. Uh, ran a Dirt Tricks uh, drivetrain, uh, the sprockets um, and chain, um, and then obviously Cyclops. He supplied uh, his uh, his dad Daryl was with us. He supplied a uh, uh, I don't know how many lumens LEDs seventy five hundred or more. I'm, he's going to kill me. Uh, I don't know how, what it was, but I, it was. What do they run? The H four. Yeah. It's like ten. Yeah, might, I think they're up to yeah, ten thousand. Yeah, I think it's a ten thousand lumen. And, you know, it's 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 one of those things where it's it's if you do have a problem and you come back at night, it, it'll it'll definitely help you. Yeah. Um, you know, get back is you know, can you do race pace with it? No, but it's definitely definitely a lot brighter. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, the rallies are pretty much over before noon anyway. Yeah. Um, so night night is not an issue. Um, ran a P three carbon skid pan. They're really lightweight. They do a great job. Mm-hmm. Um. Those are you know a lot lighter than the aluminum ones. Uh, IMS oversized gas tank. We did the 4.6. Originally, I was going to do the smaller one, and they said no, no, no. We we need to we need to run the big one. Yeah. And so it's it's a bit obnoxious. It's, it's a huge tank, <laughs> but uh, we're glad we had it. Um, and we had the, the quick dump as well. So on the on the timed uh, fuel stages, we had a bit of an advantage because a lot of the rally bikes they've just got the caps and they just have to dump them slow. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were able to come in and, and, and quick dump him within four seconds. He was gone, which nice. was really cool. And he um, was hoping for a breather. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, one of my employees just did the ten hours at, at Glen Helen solo in Ironman, yeah. and uh, we put a quick dump on that. And he, 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 you know, he's putting on his bike. I'm like, you're not going to want that. Like, <laughs> I go after about eight, eight hours. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna wish I was fueling you as slow as possible. <laughs> <laughs> But in the in the end, he had he was a champion man. In the end, he actually uh, uh, he was twenty seven seconds from first place in Ironman for ten hours straight, Dude, four crazy. p.m. to two a.m. Nice. And his lap times were almost identical every time. Oh, Real proud of him. That's a good. Yeah. And you, you've got. I actually stop really quick, but so everybody is. So I I think he was racing, and then I think your girl in shipping or, or that side of it, she yes, races yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she races women's expert, um, typically wins. Um, sweetest thing you'd ever meet. Uh, she's an absolute assassin on a dirt bike. <laughs> <laughs> Very unassuming, but yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Animal business. You, you wouldn't know. But uh, no, she does well. She raced the 10 hours with a four uh, woman team. Mm -hmm. um, they got first by like 39 minutes. Nice. Um, and Marshall um, is head of our um, uh, assembly department. And he, he soloed the 10 hour and he wants to solo the 24 hour this year. So he's kind of building up to it. So when the, when the 10 hours was over and he was all disheveled and sitting there, and I said, Marshall, I want you to think about one thing right now. And he looks at me and I said, 14 more hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, yeah, buddy. So, yeah. but he's, he's confident he's going for it. But yeah, we, we try to hire, uh, uh, not to segue, but we, uh, you know, we try to hire, you know, moto minded people, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that understand the sport, that have a passion for it. And, you know, and we're, we're very careful about culture yeah. in here. We don't just kind of, we don't just hire any Tom, Dick or Harry, you know, there's, there's been, have people come in here that are well qualified for certain jobs, um, but just still quite fit. Yeah. You know, we want to make sure that everyone in here is, is excited to be here and, and is you know is is in, into motorcycles in one way, shape, or form. I don't think I have a single employee that doesn't either ride or that doesn't ride. I yeah. think everyone rides except my wife. <laughs> <laughs> she'll so, jump on the back. Yeah, Close yeah. We've been we've been oh yeah. She'll do wheelies on the back. She's she's a great passenger. She's good. <laughs> Which is and, a good. Uh, that's a good. The whole culture thing is is huge. I, I I won't name the company because I think this was kind of embarrassing, but. Uh, on any given day that you would walk in, there was four motorcycles in front with maybe 80, 90 employees on, on staff at that, at mm -hmm. any time. Mm -hmm. And it's a very large drop shipping company. And it was very, it was kind of like, you know, nobody in marketing, nobody in any of the major positions rode. So it's kind of like, uh, okay. It, well. <laughs> it's, it's a double edged sword. Cause it, like, Oh, we'll go to the aim shows, you know, when they were around and, and, you know, which is like the you know, motorcycle industry stuff, you know, you, you go see what's new and see what you want to pick up and sell. And there's some people that, that went to college and took marketing and business and this, that, and the other thing. And they're running around there with briefcases and polo shirts. And, and you look at them, it's like, have these guys ever swung a leg over a motorcycle? You know, and they're doing business and they're doing deals and all this stuff. And you're just like, I don't understand this part of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I just, and I'm kind of glad that I don't. That's just not where I want to be. I, I don't. You know, there's there's no passion in that, and it, you know, when as you grow, uh, it, it gets a little tough to to be that choosy, you know, about who you hire. I mean, somebody might come in and they're highly qualified, and mm -hmm. they've never ridden a motorcycle, and uh, okay, you know, it's, they they might fit. You know, it's it, it it does narrow down the pool quite a bit when you're just searching for people who can do graphic art mm -hmm. and also ride motorcycles and ship and also ride motorcycles, yeah. and you know, so it's. You know, we make sure our technical guys, the guys on the phone, they all ride. They have to. They they have to understand what they're talking about. Yeah. Um, you know, we we got a, a new guy Tanner from you know Cycle Gear. You know, so he understands how to speak motorcycle parts and how to talk to people and you know that sort of thing. So you know, we tend to focus on that. Shippers, you know, they, do they have to ride? No, they just need to know how to ship and not make mistakes. But you know, we're fortunate that you know the ones we have, they ride. They, you know, so yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Where are we where we get to the end? Are we almost to the tower part? I, I, I think we're I think we're to the tower part. That's pretty much uh, the long and the short of the rest of the bike. Uh -huh. um, you know, so. it's something that anyone can build. Yeah. You know, that's kind of what we like to do is show people that this isn't completely unobtainable. Some of it is, but. Yeah. Well, and how much of like what we just talked? I mean, this is all stuff that you can get on the page, right? Are you guys mm -hmm. you guys got this up? As far as like on our website, yeah, like if, yeah. If I had a five hundred one, you know, I could start looking through the pages and get uh, start getting some of the stuff that you guys ran. Yeah, that that's kind of part of it. That yeah. it helps justify the expense of the racing as well because we're down there to learn and we're down there to you know compete and compete and you know and it helps market ourselves. But at the same time, it's also like we're pulling parts right off of our shelves and building a motorcycle. I don't have to order anything. It's just I just go over to the warehouse and get what I need, you know, and 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 put it on the bike you know so it's it's kind of a, a rolling testament of who we are and what we what we're you know what we're offering people mm -hmm. you know so yeah. if somebody wants to race and they see us racing and they want to do what we're doing well we also happen to have all of it so it's kind of a it's a, it's i like the way that that works out mm -hmm. you know it's hard for me to do you know i'm not going to go out and learn how to skateboard because i can't attach that 
in any way, shape, or form <laughs> to what I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's kind of fun when you can actually attach your passion to what you do because it makes it that much easier. It makes it that much easier to go to work where it's like, you know, we're we're not just down here for no reason. There's there's a number of reasons we're here that kind of come together that help us develop products and help us show people that we're racing the products we sell that we don't make and mm-hmm. and all of this and and it just it, it, at the end of the day when you're writing these big checks to build two of these bikes it makes it a lot easier yeah i will say that yeah. so cool. it makes and, it a lot easier to pay for all the parts that west breaks <laughs> <laughs> right I, i'm always saying this because i know he's going to listen to it at some point so. <laughs> we'll right, send him west, a, i know you're listening yeah <laughs> i'll send it to him direct message there you go. <laughs> the, so yeah, and and I'm, to me, to me, one of the biggest um, the biggest things that I've seen in in working in the industry and and riding and and doing that kind of stuff, and is exactly what you're doing, is okay. Here is this part, and I'm not talking about it because I know that the profit margin, the uh, the spiffs, the whatever. No, this is like literally a part that if I was building a race bike tomorrow, this is a part I'm going to use on this race bike because it actually works. Yeah. And that's when we develop stuff that it, it what, how much money we can make off it never crosses my mind. Yeah. Ever. I feel very lucky that we can actually make a you know, a decent living off of some of the things we've built, but mm-hmm. it's it never starts out how much money can we make on this? Yeah. You know, it starts out like I want to make this. Mm-hmm. With the triple clamps. I'm seven months into this and probably fifty thousand dollars in mm-hmm. tooling and one hundred eighty thousand dollars in machines just to make them. Now mm-hmm. I can use those machines for lots of other things, mm-hmm. but you know, it's it's just the desire to do it. I want to do it. No one else is doing it. Yeah. I think one company in Italy tried and they were horrible. Yeah. They just looked like they'd murder the rider, but. <laughs> they were built like a literally like a MotoGP treble clamp with like three bolts and it's like no 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 it's, you don't do it like that but yeah. I've never heard of them since but you know nobody was doing it we want to do things like that and, yeah. and 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 you know I feel fortunate at the end of the day that we can actually turn around and people want them and yeah. and want to buy them from us and that that's really cool yeah. but there's a lot of things we've done it's like I'll never make any money on this but you know it's they're fun to do yeah. they draw people into our website and they find other things you know but it's it's you know we get a lot of people calling us up they're like i love what you guys do and they're, they're like emotional about it yeah. and it's and it's so cool to hear that at the end of the day it's like that's cool yeah. you know well, and the passion you know the passion comes comes through and in, in what you guys do and and then and it's all backed up i mean i i think this is the first bike i would have ever considered but i have one of the one of the intakes from for uh for the 790 sitting down so i haven't mm-hmm. installed it yet but it's there and because i know flat out is like you know what the the gains are there i looked at the chart where i felt like the bike needed a little more pick me up it just so happens to be you know right where this thing also helps out so yeah why not and and then the stuff that you've done you know like with customers you you've built that loyalty with them it's like hey you know i know you got this but you know if you purchase this we're doing this now let us know you know there's a it's uh, is cult the correct term? Could it be? <laughs> it's just a, it's a, <laughs> this cult like following. Some, <laughs> yeah, we've I've, I've been accused. Uh, I think my favorite term is uh, uh, Rottweiler fanboys because you get the you get the trolls <laughs> from right. time to time, yeah. and they're inevitable. They're there, <laughs> and they you know this, they they get this cancel culture people who you know they're they're angry because there's a part that's back ordered and they're going to burn your business to the ground, so they go to the nearest facebook group and 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 just try to burn your business to the ground and the great thing is we don't have to do we don't have to lift a finger because about 50 people that love what we do will go in there and just and just drill these guys and so they <laughs> they, they call them the rottweiler fanboys you know it's yeah. like uh, you know I, I don't i don't think that's the case yeah. they're just people that are happy with what we're doing and don't agree with you <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and, and good. But, hmm, it's sold out i, I wonder why yeah <laughs> Yeah, you know, come on. Yeah, let, let, let's connect the dots here. All right, for those yeah. playing the home game, <laughs> demand. We some, yeah, we've had some people that were dead serious and like your your business should operate exactly like Amazon. We're like, really? Like, okay, I promise you. As soon as I'm doing 367 billion dollars a year, whatever you order, I will fly to your house in a Cobra helicopter that mm-hmm. I just bought. 
Mm-hmm. I promise you. And I'll, I'll repel down to your backyard and hand it to you with a bow. But until I'm making that $367 billion, we can't quite operate like Amazon as hard as we try. Yeah. You know, we want to be the best we can, but it's but there's people that they're dead serious. You yeah. should. And you – what? Yeah. <laughs> It, okay. It, to me, that it's you know after working at uh, said company and earlier and figuring out the whole Amazon thing, if people think that oh there there's um, it's a sustainable business, it is when you do that kind of volume. But if yeah. if people really knew what how much they charge sellers to sell on there, and and then the return policies and and then knew what the actual margins were at the end of the day, if you're not selling volume, you're losing money. And yeah. and the only problem with that, is, with volume, is is that now you start turning around and now it's like, okay, well, where can I save money? Where can I order this in bulk? And when can I get it yesterday? So I would tell those people, don't, don't buy from us. Yeah. If you're that guy, don't don't even go on my webpage. No. We don't want it. Yeah. You know, it's that there are some people that expect that, and we 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 uh, you know we. We've got a great crew and, you know, we've got some incentives, you know, for them, you know, meeting their goals, you know, every day and getting all the shipments out and, and we work really hard, you know, but we're, you know, it's like any other business like White Brothers or, 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 you know, we've been equated to Brothers of KTM you know, a bunch of times or Pro Circuit or whatever, you know, it's just, mm-hmm. you're not Amazon, you're doing, yeah. you know, we, we have a, we just invested in a 6,000 square foot warehouse and we've got lots of shelving and we try really hard to keep it in stock, but. You know, with COVID and everything else, it, you know, it gets tough. Yeah. It gets tough, but we're everybody's trying to, you know, we're trying to make sure that we, you know, we keep stocked and you know, we can keep people happy. And you know, most people are are great about it. Yeah. So, well, and the, and and you know what, the product's worth the wait. And if you don't believe in that, then you know you then you need to buy some more stuff because then you'll see that it's the product is worth the wait. If, if you yeah. have to wait, it's worth the wait. Yeah, if you have to. We try not to. <laughs> we try not to. But these days, man, like injection molding, resins are all – the whole world is just like – I think there's like this – this there's the, there was this rubber band kind of thing like like ripples in the pool kind of thing that happened mm-hmm. or this tug of war. Like COVID happened and then there it kind of screwed some things up and then you saw this yo-yo effect. I guess would be a good way to describe it, where there was this kind of back and forth that that kind of reverberated and got worse and worse because you saw companies going starting to see shortages, so they they panned kind of like toilet paper and like oh, I'm going to buy a whole bunch of it, and so they all start snatching it all up, and then everyone's like, oh god, it's disappearing. I'm gonna I got to get some yeah. some of that too, and then and then there's like this weird panic right now where like motorcycle parts are literally like the new toilet paper, yeah. and and it's it's fantastic. I'm not complaining, but you know we usually try to keep you know. Uh, supply above demand. Obviously, we, we, anybody anybody who's running a decent business is trying to do that. Supply went way down, demand went way up. So there was just this big hole. Yeah. Um, and so the best we could do is just lock people's places in line with parts and 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 you know do the best we can to get a hold of stuff. But the the whole industry is just like going through this yo-yo effect where like this this like echo chamber of of reactions are happening yeah. you know where like just getting our 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 injection molded parts done i mean it's we were supposed to have parts a month and a half ago for our intakes mm-hmm. and we can't get the resin and so now we're we're working with with uh you know plastics engineers to try to find a different sort of resin that our mold was not made for and things like this so yeah. you know trying to work through all that and hopefully it'll kind of subside and everything will be okay yeah. you know but, eventually the toilet paper will be back on the shelves yeah, which it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Best thing I saw on that whole thing was when when some of these uh, places started getting smart and said, you know, uh, yeah, we have a temporary return policy that means no returns. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How's all that Charmin now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm sure there was a ton of people trying to return it. All. Oh, they were. I'm sure they were pissed. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the Impossible Tower, the one that everybody wanted but never actually designed. <laughs> well, we we uh, that was that was a that was a fun thing. And the tower you're referring to is we did a we, we did a uh, a breakaway tower that actually comes back on its own. Um, and and uh, you know I haven't been in rally my whole life. We I kind of fell into it because you know it just this business and what we do mm-hmm. uh, kind of aligns itself with that. My background is off road, which is score, which is basically just go down 
pre-run the course and go as fast as you possibly can while currently scaring the <laughs> crap out of yourself yeah. constantly, uh, which is not much different from rally. Uh, rally is like going as fast as you can while trying to solve a Rubik's Cube, yeah. um, which is equally, if not more dangerous. But uh, I, I, as it, I've always gravitated towards um, mechanical engineering type of things. I like, you know, when I was a kid, don't tell anybody. This is between you and me, but yeah. I actually I built a, a quad from scratch. Don't tell anybody. But uh, um, I, when I was a kid, my, you know, my family, we had quads. We'd go to the, the dunes, and, and when in my early teens, I couldn't afford. All, I mean, back then, that was like the, the heyday of race quads. I mean, th- these things were handmade. I mean, there was, there was a, a number of companies that made frames and, and chassis components and A-arms and suspension components from scratch. They were like trophy trucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was really attractive to me, uh, but I couldn't afford any of it. So in my late teens and early 20s, I built one from scratch, and I worked at Rod Nolan Motorsports. So I, you know, I was part of the Pikes Peak program that had the world's record, and, I, and you know, I, I was able to work around some of the brightest engineers in the industry that all had IndyCar backgrounds and Formula One and GTP car. And it was all part of, the, part of the Toyota family, which was Dan Gurney and Precision Preparation Incorporated, which was PPI. They ran the Ivan Stewart uh, off-road truck, and then we, I was at Rod Millen's. And I really liked the the engineering aspect of things, of making things that that had an action and movement. And, you know, I think when I was a real little kid, I you know I was the, the younger of, of of two brothers. My brother was five years older, so I got all the hand me down Legos. Mm-hmm. So I, I never had any kits or instructions that said, "Here's what to make." You know, here's a lunar lander. Make this. It, I just had a bunch of Legos in a bucket. You know. And so I would always make things with hinges and things that moved and did. I just I wouldn't make a thing that didn't do anything. I always made things that moved mm-hmm. and did something. And I've always been fascinated with the engineering aspect of designing something that serves a purpose. And when I started looking into rally, um, you know, you you'd kind of find yourself on some of these forums. You know, the, the rally kit builder forum. There's a Facebook group, um, you know, that I pop onto every once in a while, and you always see these discussions of safety. And I had built something for the 790, and somebody got in there. It's like, well, you know, there's, it's, it's not breakaway. It's too rigid. You're going to you know, hurt the rider. And I'm like, well, there's lots of things that will hurt a rider, quite frankly. He's on a 790, yeah. for Christ's sake. He's already <laughs> relegated himself to the fact that this is very dangerous, you know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, it, it, there was this discussion of, of breakaway towers. And I started looking at this, and it's like, okay, and, which is a great thing. And they're like, okay, the upper bolts are plastic and the lower ones are metal and if you smash into it the plastic bolt breaks and you can carry spares and all this stuff but I'm like which is great but I'm, I'm looking at this going okay um, you know now you've just added insult to injury because now you're on the ground and okay you had saved your face but now you got a thing to fix mm-hmm. and and now you're out there it's going to take you 10-15 minutes to fix this thing and I just was like yeah there's got to be a better way and so on this round, um, it kind of gave me the opportunity to kind of play around with that a little bit. We have a thing on the 790 called the Trans Saver, which is essentially a gas strut that gives away so you can't hurt your transmission. Mm-hmm. It's got a linkage transmission, so we replace the rod with a gas strut. And if you stomp on it too hard, if you hit a bump and, and you stomp on the shifter, you're not going to bend anything. You won't hurt anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's this gas strut, and I had these around, and I'm like, man. I started thinking, I'm like, there's got to be a way to like put – the whole nav tower on a hinge and then just put it on a gas strut and you can get the gas struts at all kinds of different pressures and and strengths and and to hold different weights and so i started designing this thing and i kind of had it in my head for a while and i'm thinking okay how can i how can i how can i make this thing so if if west ever crashes hard a it's going to save the very expensive tower one that we were running on there Mm -hmm. b um, and more importantly, save the rider if the rider, you know, hits this thing or smashes into it. And how can I kind of custom tailor this thing to kind of match the weight and give way? You know, you want to be as rigid as possible, but give way when it needs to. And so I kind of, I work better under pressure um, if I procrastinate. Mm-hmm. I, 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 you know, I just, I just, I need that pressure on me to kind of, to, 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 to focus you know, otherwise it's like, ah, I don't need to do this right now. I can just put it down and move on to something else. But, you know, when a rally's coming up and it's a couple of weeks away, it, it forces me to really knuckle down and do things. And sometimes I purposely wait um, just, just for that reason. Yeah. But I had this thing from 
from idea, from concept to fully machined and made in two two full long working days. Um, mm-hmm. And you saw you saw it down there. Yeah. And we designed the thing to where a it broke away forward on the gas strut, but would come back, and b it actually could break sideways, mm-hmm. uh, left to right, um, and hinge left to right. So we used some. We kind of I designed it on on. Uh, um, I didn't use solid any kind of solid CAD. It's kind of not necessary. Most of it's two dimensional. So I just used old school CAD. I'm very fast with it. Yeah. Um, and so I, I designed a pivot in the middle, and I had two uh, Delrin kind of um, friction. Uh, um, washers on either side of this plate uh, that you can kind of custom tailor. A little conical washer on there where you can kind of custom tailor the pressure um, and how much friction, uh, you know, how, how much force it takes to break it to the side. You felt it. Aside, yeah. You pushed it aside a number of times to get the uh, the, the, uh, the chip chips out. in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, honestly, like the thing right out of the gate, uh, you know, the first day you're always worried about it. Like, okay, what what are the no seeings? What's going to go out and is the gas strut going to give out? Is it just going to? Is it not going to take Wes's abuse or the abuse of the the weight of the the road book? Is it just going to start flopping around and you know and and honestly, like he, we went through the first day and Wes actually came in. He's like, he's like, I ate it on this thing. He's like, and I used it. He's like, I I face planted right into the thing. I felt it give way and I went right through it. And I was like, wow, cool, you know. And it's it's like it's what you hope to happen, mm-hmm. you know, and you, and how you hope things will work, but you always go out there with your fingers crossed going, okay, here, you know, here's, here's the way I think this <laughs> thing's going to work, but we didn't have any testing time because Wes lives far away and it's expensive for him to fly in and test and ride and, you know, and the, you know, the, the suspension guys in Texas and it's just, you know, and things were a little bit late and business, is, it's hard for me as the owner of this business to really kind of focus on just that. I have a lot of other irons in the fire constantly. Mm-hmm. So, we just went down there with this untested thing, and throughout the the, the rally, uh, he he tested it for me probably about four or five times. Um, on the final day, he said he face planted right into the thing, boom, just right into that, and he said it he felt it gave way. And we we had a sixty pound strut that we probably could have used, but I was a little bit worried about the the road book kind of flopping around because they are about four pounds these these tower ones. Mm-hmm. Um, so we ended up going up to about an eighty pound. A gas strut, but I think we still could have run 60 and it would have never moved. And all that means is it'll just give way easier if you hit it. Yeah. You know, but what you're trying to do is get the thing to not move to almost, it's kind of like suspension. Like you want it to bottom out once somewhere on the racetrack, mm-hmm. you know, or maybe not want it, but come close to bottoming out somewhere. Yeah. Then you know you're, you're using the full stroke. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like that. It's like you kind of want the thing maybe on the hardest hit of the day to maybe just move a little bit, but they come back up slowly. So it's not like it's going to be banging around or do anything. They, they compress and then come back up like a like a valve shock mm-hmm. um and uh I, I think you know i had to give the tower one back but i think we're going to put four pounds on that thing and actually go out and ride it and test struts and try to get the lightest one we can on there because yeah. uh, then it'll just truly it's not really like if you face plan into it it'll just give way and it's that that much less force pushing back on your neck or head mm-hmm. um but this way you know if you go down uh, and he did you can get right back up you can grab the thing uh, and move it back to center, and it's already up, and and hardly do a thing. Yeah. And the idea is is to try to, I, I I think the second iteration. One thing I'd like to try with this thing is is actually make it to where there's maybe two smaller gas struts on the side to where instead of breaking away uh, to the side and you having to pull it back, it'll actually just pop back up in the center and like almost like a tripod mm-hmm. of gas struts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where they're all kind of pushing towards center and it'll go in any different direction it gets pushed and in complete you know until it you know you try to give it as much travel as it can before it hits something else mm-hmm. you know like a fork or or a, you know whatever you know it's it's going to limit its travel to yeah. give way um but you know to to put like maybe three struts on there and it's, they're not very heavy actually mm-hmm. i mean you saw the thing the whole the whole apparatus was probably a lot lighter than some of the lightest ones out there mm-hmm. um and it made it a bit easier. Wes didn't doesn't mind them wrote on the handlebars. Um, mm-hmm. It's not as cool as is off the frame. You know, I'd love to do one off the frame, but that poses a lot of problems with forks and hand guards hitting the, you know, hitting the the, the, the road books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just you just kind of run out of room. Whereas if it's if it's moving with the handlebars, you know, you can actually make things quite a bit lighter. 
the mm-hmm. caveat is it's moving around, but Wes, he's, I don't have any problem with it on the handlebars. Yeah. So we, we just kind of went with that. Um, and it, and it just, it worked. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it, we're really happy with, you know, to, to be able to kind of make something that could be the catalyst for some, even Ricky Brabeck down there was, was scoping it out. And he was asking me a lot of questions about it. And he's like, you know, Dakar's kind of, on us pretty heavy to make something safer than what we have mm-hmm. um you know and and he was really interested in the concept and i said i'd you know i'd be interested in helping you yeah. um you know you just it's not very difficult but to kind of like be involved it's not like you're going to make a million dollars making these things rallies yeah. re- relatively small but um just to kind of have your name on something that 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 uh, improves safety is kind of neat yeah i think well, and, and it's, uh, it really is a big deal because even, you know, in, in the previous rallies, like working at Baja Rally and stuff like that, like it was one of those things that you come back and you see the road book, um, the paper road book holders, you know, from like the F2Rs where the glass is broken. So, you know, yeah. the, the riders went into these things, you know, at least once. And, mm-hmm. and it's just one of those, you know, one of those things. And, and I completely agree. And I think that for, I'll rewind back to, okay, this thing does not look like it took you two days to build. Like this, that's shocking because like <laughs> I knew you had said you had kind of thrown it together at the end, and you know it was kind of a quicker project, but definitely does not look like two days. Like this looks way more refined than just two days worth of work. And uh, <laughs> well, thank so, you. I mean, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> It, I, I was actually kind of amazed at that myself. I stood back, and you kind of come out of this fog of design <laughs> fury, you know, late nights and coming home at 1 o'clock in the morning trying to thrash on the machines. And We've got about five CNCs here, and, and three of them are very friendly. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, the, they're, they're kind of designed for prototyping. Mm-hmm. Um, we have two that are doing the triple clamps where it's like you don't even want to try to program or fire these things up unless you're making 100 parts or 1,000 parts or mm-hmm. whatever because they're just so complex to program. Yeah. Whereas these other ones, they're very easy to program. They, they, they don't, they're not quite as capable as a, as a higher end like our other two Doosons that we're doing the triple clamps on. Mm-hmm. But you can program things fairly quickly. Um, and the neat thing is is that you got to – the hard thing is you got to make tooling. To, to kind of hold the part while you machine it, or right? you know, how, what, what's keeping this thing from flying away once you, <laughs> you know, once, once you're done, you know, cutting it out with the end mill. So you have to make some sort of tooling to to hold the thing. And and but the cool thing is, is once the tooling's done, I would take the first one off there. I'd slap another piece of metal in, hit go on the machine, and walk over and start fitting the parts while a second one was being made. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I actually went down all the parts you saw. I actually had five complete sets of spares. Nice. Um, that I that I could have rebuilt that thing five times. Yeah. And I and that was all that stuff was made within those two days. Um, on, you know, using that same that same kind of process where okay, cool, tools done, just slap another part in there, walk away, and go fit it. Yeah. Um, but I, I I really feel very fortunate and very lucky that that the thing. I mean, there's hardly anything I would change. I might make a couple of refinements here and there, but yeah. there's hardly a thing I would change on it. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's still, it's you know, the bike's a part in my shop, but it's still on the bike. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I'm looking at it going, eh, it's, I think it's good, yeah. you know? Yeah, the design, like I said, I mean, it already it already looks refined. And, yeah, like I said, there's just a couple ideas, a couple things you can do, you know, to break away left and right and stuff like that. But the big thing, and, I, and we said this a bunch of times when we were talking about it, but it's like, yeah, everybody wanted a breakaway tower un- until it was time that it broke away. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so, you're like, okay, great. Now, now what? what? <laughs> it's the, it's yeah. the insult to injury part, you yeah. know, literally. Yeah. Well, and then, like you said, like, oh, okay, yeah, the, the, the idea that you mentioned, right? Yeah, metal bolts at the bottom, plastic bolts at the top. Uh, okay, the plastic bolts broke. Now I'm on top of the sand dune because I face-planted it off of this witch's eye. And I've already dropped two of them in the sand. And they're not coming back. And I've got yeah. one more to make it happen. You know, mm-hmm. th- it just doesn't – it's not practical. And, yeah, and in a game of time, it's very not practical. It's completely the opposite of what you want, you know. So, you solved the problem that probably these people were trying to think their way out of for years. I think now, and it, you know, and it not. To, I mean, I hope this doesn't come across as you know. Yeah, just say it. Come across <laughs> wrong, but <laughs> it, it, you know, it, it kind of amazed me. Like, why hasn't anyone done this? Yeah. It seems so. It seems so simple, and I don't want that to sound 
uh, you no. know, it, you know, braggadocious or anything, you know, no. nothing of the sort. I, it just kind of baffles me. It's like, why hasn't anyone done this? It seems so simple. Well, I think you, know? you nailed it earlier too, and I mean, and that's the you're coming at this from not you're coming at it from a Baja. You're coming at it from working with engineers that will. I mean, if you ever want to see the world's most complicated, you know, mounting block for, I don't know, whatever uh, headphones, these guys would design that. So you come from that world, and now so you see this, and it's easy. Where uh, the rest of us are looking at it going, well, yeah, but you need a rally tower, and it's got to be like this, and you can, so you have a fresh set of eyes. I, yeah, I think I, I, I think people get stuck in a certain headspace, yeah. for sure. And I, I think you're right. I, you know, I, I come at things from a, a completely different, you know, from a outside perspective. I always kind of like equate some of this. Uh, I'm not equating myself to Eddie Van Halen. I'm going to put that disclaimer out there. <laughs> but the, yeah. the the he he didn't know how to read music. He'd never taken a music lesson in his life. He mm-hmm. just picked up a guitar when he was a kid and. And he, so he could think out of the box and invented all these different things, you know, with on the guitar, mm-hmm. um, these different ways of playing. The guy was amazing, you know, and he he, he was never boxed in like that. Um, and I think, you know, from like an engineering standpoint, I, I, it's fun to see people that aren't haven't been boxed in. They come, you know, I, I learned from a lot of really talented engineers. I, I felt very lucky to be to have a job at Ron Millen Motorsports. I was very lucky to get the job, um, but driven enough to keep it. Yeah. Um, they hired me as a parts driver. Didn't know I was a fabricator when I was a kid, and mm-hmm. they needed the cheapest guy in the shop to to weld up a trailer. And I laid this stack of dimes with a MIG welder. And one guy comes out, he's like, um, "You've done this before." I'm like, "Yeah, I thought that's why I got hired here." <laughs> <laughs> oh, you hired me for my driving ability. Got it? <laughs> yeah, they were like, I was driving parts, you know. And I'm like, "What the hell is this?" I thought I was going to fabricate, you know. And they're they're building all this amazing stuff, and I'm driving parts around while I. You know, I got a chance, and I, I welded some stuff. They saw it, and next, you know, a guy saw it and told the manager. A manager saw it, and he told Rod Millen. He came out. Next thing you know, I'm making A-arms for Jimmy Johnson's soda truck when he raced core. Yeah. You know, uh, that that was the, the guy who yeah. went on to be, you know, the big NASCAR champion. I used to know the guy. I used to have, have his cell phone number. Believe yeah. it or not, hung out a couple of times. Nice. But, um, you know, so I got lucky and got to learn from some really unique engineers, you know, like, like that, that would design these things like the pike's peak car had this triple shock thing in the front where it was like there was a center shock and it had push rods and they had these bell cranks and it was all underneath the hood it was very much like an indy car mm-hmm. but there was a third shock on it on a t it's kind of hard to describe over a over vocally but yeah. basically if either because it was off-road there was so much downforce on the car you could technically drive the car upside down at 100 miles an hour uh, there was so much downforce yeah and it was a 2.1 liter four cylinder that made like 1,100 horsepower. It seemed crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. Only weighed like 2,000 pounds, and the thing was nuts. Yeah. But there, the the center shock basically was on a T, and it had linkages that would go down to the bell cranks on the other two shocks. So if they worked independently, the center shock just would never move. Mm-hmm. Nothing would ever happen. But if both shocks moved at the same time, they would move this kind of this this T bar mm-hmm. straight down, and the third shock would kick in. And it was really neat being at Millen's because we would get handed all these drawings, these blueprints, and as a fabricator, you, you, you take this blueprint and go make this stuff, and you had no idea what you were making. And it would all go off to heat treat, and then it would go to the machine shop and get final machine for the, you know, the rod ends or the bushings that were getting pressed in them and all these different things. And then you'd see this thing, like, assembled by the mechanics after a number of months or time or whatever it was that, that, that it took to put this stuff together. And you'd be looking at this front end, and, and you'd, you'd get cross-eyed, trying to figure out how all these linkages worked and, like, these, these adjustable sway bars. And I just love that stuff, love that stuff. And it was, it was I, I feel very fortunate and lucky that I was, could be around that when I was young um, and had the ability to kind of absorb some of it. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not classically trained as far as designing goes. I just was lucky enough to be around it and skilled enough to 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 take from it and yeah. you know move it into something else. But um, I, anyway, long story sh- long, I guess we I I just I like it when I can. I don't I, I don't like I'm not going to show up to a rally with a standard off the shelf thing. You'll mm-hmm. never see me do that. I'm yeah. going to show up with a 790, where I'm going to show up with a breakaway tower. I I need to show up with something that has people going. Wait a minute. Yeah. You know, what is going on here? Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's the fun I get to have. Yeah. You know, if I'm not racing, you know, I used to, I used to race myself and that was fun because people were like, you know, you're the racer for a week, which was cool. 
but I'm too old for that now. So now I just got to build stuff. <laughs> <laughs> just keep making it happen. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's, that's uh, good. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, I see, uh, I mean, obviously we, we see the products, we see everything that's going on and you're constantly doing, you always got dino charts. Like everything is just this open book. It's like, Hey, you want to know the truth? Here you go. I mean, it's, and obviously all this stuff's just badass. So, I mean, oh, thank you. And we, uh, yeah, we try to be as, as it, our, our rule of thumb is I kind of took a, 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 a cue from Jimmy Lewis where he's like, Hey, you know, if I test anything, you give me something to test. You have to be ready for me to say something negative. And the reason I, I say that is because I have a reputation to protect. I can't be bought. Mm-hmm. And similar to with, with the dino charts, like we always put out everything we put out, we try to be as completely honest as, as possible um, and transparent, you know, to where if anyone says that seems unreal, because a lot of the intakes we make, the problem is they do make so much horsepower that it, it actually, it seems unreal to people. You know, we were making, I think, 17 horsepower to the tire on an RC8, mm-hmm. um, and the factory HMC racing used them for a few races. Um, but it, there was, we made so much horsepower, it was like, you know, we put out these charts and people go, it's easy to, for people to dismiss them mm-hmm. because there is a lot of horsepower being made, but. You know, we try to put out everything. Everything is is we use the best of the best. So if we if we do run stock, it's very easy to use like the 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 lowest run of stock and the highest run of modified because you have then you have this large disparity between the two and it looks like you made a whole bunch of horsepower. Yeah. We don't do that. We'll use the best of both. So we will use the best of stock and then the best of 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 uh, you know whatever the the modification is. And sometimes we use the best of both and then the worst of both. And we'll show you this was the worst of both. This was the best of both. And both of them have a gain with the with the with you know with the air boxes or the the mapping or something like this. So they can see that even the worst of both all each because we'll do five or ten runs of everything we do. Mm-hmm. You know, so we try to be as honest as we can with all that stuff. So that way we can look people in the eye and go, yeah, here it is. That's what it and does. We, I like to put more of that out there. I really enjoy like doing live uh, Facebook things in the yeah. dyno. Yeah. Um, I've done a few of those, and a bunch of people, you know, will tune in from all over the world, and it's really fun to have this dialogue with these people. Like, hello from Czechoslovakia, and hello from Spain, and hello from China, and hello from all over the place, and it's yeah. really fun. And I'm sure you get a lot of that too with these. And yeah, it's fun I, to interact with people. Yeah. I wish I could do it more. I know, right? Well, and, and that's like the energy. It's like you you get to see that. Like sometimes you're like, ah, why am I really doing this? And then all of a sudden, you know, it's like, oh, hey, keep it up. You know, I've learned a lot. Or hey, why don't you talk about this? Like I want to know more about this kind of stuff. And it's like crazy. And it's it always seems to be timed right around the time you're thinking like, hmm, what's next? You know, or, mm-hmm. or yeah, well, I'm just gonna put this out there. So yeah, yeah sometimes crazy. they're just impromptu. Yeah. You know, I'm like, you know, I'm in here. You know, I'm I'm I've Here's what I've learned, and all mm-hmm. I got to do is turn on my phone. It's an amazing tool. I mean, as much as I hate social media, yeah. it's, a, <laughs> it's for some reasons it's an amazing tool to like get out there, and I'll just turn it on and start talking to people, and that's that's a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I really enjoy that. That should be you gotta be having fun. Not having fun is not yeah. worth it. So yeah. I got two questions I got to ask. Have to ask. Yeah. Uh, one is because I'm I'm I I was an early adopter of said uh, auxiliary fuel tanks for a 790. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I know you were working on something. Mm-hmm. What do we I think? I will have a prototype in my hands tomorrow, an actual, oh. an actual rotor molded one. Nice. So the way these work is all these things take months. Yeah. Um, it's just it takes months. You know, I, I hire engineers to come in here, um, basically just you know CAD designers. Um, mm-hmm. I kind of engineer the thing. I come up with the idea and I wave my hands around. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I've got a few professionals I work with that have, th- you know, 3D scanning equipment. And I've often wanted to buy 3D scanning equipment. It's about a hundred grand, mm-hmm. um, maybe sixty grand. But the problem is having the software to do anything with it is another twenty grand, and then having a person who's educated enough to do anything with it. So I tend to uh, hire out for mm-hmm. that. And I've got a great couple of guys that I work with. Yeah. And so you know, you bring them in and we scan some stuff, and you, you basically let them know what you want to do. And they start building it, and there's a lot of back and forth between emails and drawings, and they send you, then they send you the file, and you look at it. And once you get to something, then it's making the prototype, and we actually had a, uh, a styrofoam uh, prototype made uh, to physically fit in the bike to make sure, because it's a pretty hefty investment making these molds to make these things. Yeah. And uh, the, 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 the styrofoam prototype was $2,600, and it was m- made 
on a on a forty one foot long million and a half dollar five axis CNC machine. And that was the only company I could find to make this thing for me. And they're like, yeah, we could do it, twenty six hundred bucks. Um, and it, what these machines are made for is they make plugs for boats. Like if you design a boat, you have a CAD design for a boat, oh. you need to make a plug to make the molds off of. And they do trophy trucks as well, mm -hmm. trophy truck bodies. So we got this thing, we fit it in there, and then once we have that, then we're like, okay, here's the tweaks we need to make. We make those tweaks, and then we and then we start working on the, uh, working with the companies for the molds. And so we have the mold made. Mm -hmm. And it's a hell of a thing, too. There's a lot of nooks and crannies in this thing. We wanted to fill every space we could. Yeah. And um, we have one that is supposed to show up tomorrow, an actual working one. Working one. Nice. So two of them, actually, are showing up. So really excited about that. We we designed that with our intake for the 790 mm -hmm. at the same time. And we purposely kept it quiet because we, we wanted to kind of reward the people that were buying our stuff yeah. um, and bought our intake and, and and once we released the intakes we said hey by the way guess what we're also doing this too and it fits with our airbox and we like to design things a lot of times when we design like the airbox mm -hmm. I try to stand back and look at the whole thing and said okay if I'm in the process of redesigning a thing how many other benefits can I weave into this design yeah at the same time you know can I because at one point the, the air filter on that box is a little bit further back Mm -hmm. um, and all of a sudden, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm like, dude, I could actually just move that forward, and then we could design a fuel tank to fit in there and, and all this. And, and and so we did that, and, uh, and then we let everyone know. And there was a, there was a lot of excitement about that. And you know, you get you know, there's guys like you know that'll get on your Facebook and they'll go, why would I want that? It's like, well, you wouldn't. Yeah. So yeah, you know. if you're asking the question, you don't need to. Yeah, if you yeah. got to ask, it's not for you. Yeah. You know, it's not, you can't say there's a thing for everybody. Yeah, but there's people in Australia, especially Australians, they love fuel capacity because they got to go a long ways. Mm -hmm. um, people, you know, uh, you know, there's more fuel. There's a lot of people that just want more fuel. They want to go mm -hmm. further. They've got longer, you know, further further distances to travel. So, yeah. um, well, and I can tell you, as somebody that riding on the street down in Baja and and missing a gas station and thinking, oh, that next one should be open, and then it not being, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it's easy to get ahead of yourself and run the the bike out of gas, and then doing short rides where you're you're really on it, uh, mm -hmm. in case some people forget, you do have two pistons to feed, so <laughs> those five gallons don't really go as far as you think they're gonna go. When you're no, on, no, it. and, it, and it's it, we we had an aluminum one that we designed for the 990. This is long before the 790 was even thought of. Um, and I tell you, I, I did a, you know we rode to Cabo once or twice, and I was with a group of like five other 990s or 950s or whatever. And I had this fuel tank, and and just having that, it was a great feeling, just knowing that like I'm the last guy that's going to run out of gas. <laughs> you know, yeah, and it and it wasn't very. You know, I like to try to design things where they're not very obtrusive, and mm -hmm. you know, there's there's this just this space underneath the seat that was just kind of dead, and I'm like, you know, I could probably fit, you know, a, a gallon or more down there. And right now we're looking at around the solid model says two gallons, but it's not it's not compensating for the wall thickness. Mm -hmm. So my guess right now is about a gallon and a half. I might be surprised. It might be more or less. I'm not entirely sure yeah. um, until I get it and fill it. Um, but right now we went with a four millimeter wall thickness and you can stand on the thing. It's So we think we can go with a thinner wall and get more fuel in there because mm -hmm. uh, yeah. they're, they're rotomolded. Yeah. So, but wow. at least a gallon, gallon and a half, um, you know, that's, that's 75 miles. Nice. Yeah. You know, <laughs> on a, Depending on how it's mapped, fifty to seventy-five miles is that's uh, how much would you pay not to walk that far? <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the in uh, in uh, <laughs> yeah exactly right in Catavina <laughs> when I almost ran it out and barely made it back to Rosario. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on a hot yeah. day, yeah, <laughs> I'd, I'd pay a lot. <laughs> yeah, you're stopping at every house like, hey, do you any gasoline? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And hoping, oh, yeah. and hoping. Yeah, yeah. It's like, dude, I'll give you ten bucks a gallon. I was I gonna, care. I was gonna say, yeah, for those playing the home game, you think that five dollars a gallon is expensive. Wait until you run out of gas in Baja. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're, you know what? To, to their credit, they're usually they they just want what they paid for it. You yeah, know? And true. It, but it's like, no, man, I'm giving you ten dollars a gallon. Yeah, yeah. You saved my ass <laughs> on you. this one. Yeah. 
Yeah. Nice. All right, so what should we uh, be keeping an eye out for? Uh, you guys got anything coming from Sonora Rally or anything else uh, that we need to be looking at? We actually have a, uh, a 45-minute movie um, that uh-huh. we that we shot down there that we're really excited about. Um, so we I, I hired a full-time media guy, and he is the gentleman. His name is uh, Scott Murphy, mm-hmm. um, and he is the guy who – uh, he filmed our our 2019 690 intake video and our 790 insulation video, which I'm, you've probably seen. I have, yes. A um, lot of guy, a lot of really positive comments on that, and and he was kind of a freelance guy, work, working for a cell phone company, making cell phone videos, you know. Like, and he just was like, I want to be in motorsports. I love motorsports. So he called me one day, and so we, I, I said, I've, I've really been wanting a full time media guy just to see. You know what we could do with that. What kind of fun stuff we could put out? I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of work stuff that that he could do for us. But we also wanted to do some things that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And you know, for years, for half my life, I've been going down and doing these events. And and we've had some, some like you know, Baja 2000 when we raced Class 10, 46 hour race. We finished. We got first place by 19 seconds. You know. And, and there's like literally a movie wrapped up in this race, and no one there to, to catch it. And yeah. you know, from time to time, you see somebody put something together, and you're like, wow, you get to relive it. And it's so cool. And you're like, somebody put forth the effort to make this. How cool is that? You know. And I've always loved that. Um, and so we, I hired Scott, and his literally his first day was Saturday, going down to Mexico with me to the Sonora Rally. Nice. Um, and I know you saw him down there, and he had the, the gimbal camera everywhere, and. And so we we would kind of do these interviews all over the place, and we're trying to put together an arc of a story. And we kind of wanted to do it, you know, for a number of reasons. A, it's you know, it's marketing for us for sure. Um, mm-hmm. B, um, you know, we get to show off our sponsors in a way that no one else does. You know, somebody might you know put a story on social media that's gone within 24 hours, and that's what you get for your money. It's like no, no, no. We're going to put out a 45 minute movie about us running the Sonora Rally. You know that that showcases all this stuff, um, all the, you know, all the help that the sponsors gave us. It allows us to go back and relive it. We're really hoping that a lot of the guys down there and the Sonora Rally uh, organization themselves, you know, will host it on their side. I think it, it paints them in a, in a great light. We had a blast. Um, it just it's it was. I just wanted to do it. Yeah. You know, I just wanted to. You know, it's taken you know three weeks or so, or it's a you know to to put together and. Scott's been doing a great job. We've gone through a couple little iterations here and there. Mm-hmm. I actually had – we had video of Andrew uh, puking his guts out, and I, <laughs> he wanted to put it in the film. And I go, and this is Andrew Short I'm talking about. And, yeah. and I, I sent it to him. I'm like, hey, man, my media guy really wants to use this, but I don't want to use this without your permission. And I, th- I, I said, I'm pretty sure the answer is no. And he's like, no, it's cool. I'm like, really? <laughs> Okay, nice. yeah, but he, he he you know he got food poisoning that one day and yeah. and had to drop yeah. out, which was was such a bummer. And but that's in there, and we we tried to capture the moments, and we're really excited about how it's going to come out. So this Tuesday at our okay. shop, we haven't put anything on our fa- on our Facebook yet. Okay, uh, probably going to try to put something out tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But um, um, we bought a like a 4K projector, and and this Tuesday we're going to have like a, a like a, a locals thing, and we're going to have um, hot dogs and beer. And uh, nice. we're gonna we're gonna have a a, a, um, a premiere of this of this movie at our shop in Costa Mesa, um, and anyone who's local is invited. Um, we have a snap-on kegerator, um, <laughs> believe it or not. Nice. And uh, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna show the film, and hopefully everyone will love it. And, and yeah. then we're gonna release it in. It's gonna be in. I think uh, four. It's gonna be a four-part thing. Okay. Um, so you know. So you can kind of retain attention. They'll be about ten minutes a piece, mm-hmm. and we're going to release four of them. And then once those are all released, you know, probably a few days apart, maybe three days apart. Yeah, um, we're going to release the the full length video, and and we're excited about it. Nice. I, I, I hope people are will will get excited for us and, and share it around. And, and at the very least, you know, we're we're, we're trying to like just like tell a story there's no like overt advertising in it at all except for the credits and we hope people watch that because those are the people that helped us yeah um but there's it's really just the, the story of us going down there and as as a semi private i don't what do, you, what do you call between factory and privateer huh That's what would that one. be i don't know because uh, we're not privateer no it's we're, we're but we're not a factory we're like a like a, a hmm. race shop i don't know expert oh, well uh, yeah i don't know that's a good one 
We'll have I'll to have come to up with a term. on that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you think of something, text me. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> nice. you know, we, we just, I don't know. We, we, hopefully it'll be fun, and we, I, I, I definitely want to do more. There's too many times we've done a thing somewhere and just never captured it, and, and it's just like, ah, maybe it's time, yeah. you know. Well, that's so. awesome. And, and it, it, you know, it's true, that whole place, that whole rally, like that was my first time working the full rally, and uh, mm-hmm. there's just so much to see, and, and then the hanging out and the the meeting everybody and chatting with everybody and doing all that stuff is just, it, it's just so awesome. So it's it's actually really cool um, to see, you know, that I'm, I'm glad you did that. You know, I had, I had no idea. This is kind of, it, this is awesome. Scott captured that, too. Um, awesome. You know, he, I, we, we wanted to make sure that 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 camaraderie part, mm-hmm. and that that you know when everyone's eating tacos and 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 talking and having beers or whatever, we wanted to show that part of it. And he does a great job. Awesome. Uh, you know, he puts some really cool music to it, and, and it and it shows that that's the lifestyle part of it. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you know we've got you know the final day, and he's got some tense music to it, and, and it's I don't know, we we had some fun with it. I'm I'm excited. Nice. Oh, yeah. awesome. Hopefully it'll hopefully it'll generate more interest yeah. in the rallies and and sometimes if you can you know if you can take some of the mystery away mm-hmm. you know and through a video like this yeah. people see that and they go I can do that mm-hmm. you know because to be honest like the first one we down went down and raced the 790 I I didn't want to go down there because all I had ever done was score and I remembered how you really had to like when I race score on motorcycles I worked for a, a, a race car team, a buggy team. So we had uh, some class 10s and class 1s and I crew chiefed and co-drove. And I did this for about four and a half years. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was basically just a wealthy family that I worked for. Yeah. And I learned the ropes of score through them. And so when I re- went to go race my own team, I knew exactly where sign up was. I knew how to sign up. I knew exactly what the rules were. I knew exactly where everything was. And going down like to this rally, they were like, dude, you, you need to come down. You need to compete. You know, this is right up your alley. You know, bring the 790 down. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And I had a friend who was like, what's your hangout? And I'm like, I just don't know where to go, what to do. He's like, don't worry about it. Just follow me. It's easy. It's easy. And we, I went down there, and I had a blast. First time I'd ever done one. I didn't really know that. And we had an absolute blast. And they went to these amazing places, and it was like, this is easy. It's not I mean, the Baja 1000 is ex- extremely stressful because it is nonstop. You can't make mistakes. You don't have time to fix bikes or change tires, or you do have. I mean, you have time, but it's all on the clock. You got to go, yeah. go, go, and it's very, very stressful. And that's just all I could pull from information-wise mm-hmm. of what I thought this was about. And it let, a lot of people are like, "Dude, it's so much fun," you know. And, and so I said, "Okay." He's like, "I said I'll meet you down there, and I'm just going to follow you." And so I did. And then, like anything else, once you do it, it's like, "Cool, I get it now. I'll I'll do this again." It's like the KTM rally. I had heard about this thing, and we're like, "Let's go do this." We went out there, and once we got, we figured it out. We love it. It's the best. Thing. We, it's our favorite event for the entire year. So hopefully, this video will kind of help people with that. At the very least, they can see it and go, "Oh, that's that's cool." Because we show sign up and contingency. We show what it's about. We show you guys putting in the chips. We sh- they, we show us mounting the nav gear and the kind of like the trickiness where they kind of throw stuff at you. You don't get to get some of these gizmos until you're down there and you got to be prepared to wire these things yeah. and 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 you know we had a little hiccup on the nav tower with some bolts getting in the way and and so we we kind of overcame that and, and fixed that issue and we show that in the video and then we show the racing we show um you know some of the problems that we had we, we got extremely lucky one day on the third day when west had a catastrophic uh moose failure on the highway we happened to be behind him and it was a complete accident if we weren't there and we caught it all on camera. And if we weren't there, we would have been out of the race. There's, he would have been sitting there. He might have been able to text us and through a spot and say, "Hey, here's where I'm at." Yeah. You know. But we happened to be right behind him when when the moose popped out and locked up his his, his final drive and just oh, literally no. ground him to a halt. There was a truck right behind him that almost rear-ended him. We almost rear-ended the truck. Wow. But we got. We didn't get that part on film because he wasn't filming. I wish he was, but uh, yeah. um, he turned on the. It was funny because the, the cameraman runs out of the truck and he's and he's you know everyone's scrambling around we're we're you know we happen to be there with the trailer and the truck and all the tools and the tires and the spares and all the stuff it's like what do you want me to do i'm like go get the camera <laughs> do what you're here <laughs> that's to what do. i want you this is the only reason you're here and he just got caught up in the moment like anybody else you know he was like what what do you need what do you need and i'm like 
I need you to go get the camera because that's what <laughs> you, I go. I don't want you to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, and he, you know, and he runs and gets the camera, and so we, it just kind of in the video, it just kind of clicks on. You don't really see what happened, you know. The context of it, yeah. Yeah, it's all of a sudden he just had to cut to it with some text, you know. But uh, uh, anyway, it's I, I, I hope people enjoy it. And I hope it takes some mystery out of stuff, and and you know, I hope you know this snow rally organization enjoys it and maybe shares it and, and who knows yeah who knows yeah, but we're, we're looking there. forward to it yeah so yeah next next tuesday we're gonna i think around 6 30 mm-hmm. uh, look on our facebook page we're gonna have a uh, um i think when you air this it'll probably be the day before that but yeah. um uh, so, it, uh, it, sunday morning sunday 10 a.m okay a couple yeah. days so for the yeah. southern california guys that want to come here you know like i said we're gonna have uh, pizza and hot dogs and barbecue and we're gonna show the thing and, and try to have some fun with it and nice just, and that's some, tu- Tuesday at Tuesday uh, six thirty, most likely six thirty. Okay, give, give people a chance to get off work and, and get over here. Uh, I kind of, I think I'm kind of coming down with something. I'm not sure if I'll be able to go to work on Tuesday, but yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they don't listen to my podcast anyway, so I think I'm safe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah. vouch for you. There we go. <laughs> nice. Well, that is awesome. Dude, I really appreciate you taking the time and, and going over that bike with us and, and the rally tower and, and learn some history. That rot- <laughs> where all this got started, where you got started on. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, well, thank you for having me on the show. And I, I was I was I was thrilled that you reached out. Uh, uh, I know about the podcast and yeah. and uh, and I'm I'm okay. honored to, to to be on the show. So thank you very much yeah. for for having me. Yeah, no, no, well, keep keep doing what you do, <laughs> please. Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it just give us more time so I know you know so I can call Visa and Mastercard about you know <laughs> higher limits oh, yeah. or whatnot. <laughs> you're not the first one to make that joke. We 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 actually used to have an ad that said uh, uh, see if I can remember this correctly. We li- this was a literal ad that we took out in a magazine that said uh, Rottweiler Performance uh, making your KTM better and your marriage worse since 2011. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> it literally said that. Now I think that was like the best ad we had because I like that stuff. We had another one that said, uh, "I think keeping your kids out of college since 2011 or something like that." <laughs> well, but we get plenty of people call us with the with the the secret credit cards and the hidden PayPal accounts that wives don't know about. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's what's going to ask. How much? How much do you charge to make a second invoice with a lower amount that actually represents what we told her they were? It was. Oh, we do that for free. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> There's no minimum <laughs> purchase. Actually, yeah. <laughs> no, no, we, we we know the drill. We know the drill. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, we actually have a rule. It, it, we uh, any anybody if anybody brings their wife or girlfriend in here, we'll give them a free. We have women's T-shirts, and we always give uh, their girlfriend or wife a, a free T-shirt. Nice. Um, just, just, just <laughs> kind of you know, just cool, the, you know, yeah. <laughs> make the car <laughs> ride home up. a little better, you know. <laughs> yeah. Shuts them up is what it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. The nice. players that we get sometimes like stop telling him about cool stuff. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> he's asking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll keep him away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Problem solved. <laughs> nice. All right, sir. Well, I'll let you get back to machining some parts and, and making some stuff happen, and and uh, we'll look forward to hearing or seeing the videos uh, start coming out after Tuesday. Awesome, awesome. Cool. Really enjoyed the time. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. It was fun. All righty, sir. Same here. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll see ya. See ya. All right. So that was none other than Chris from Rottweiler Performance. And I am absolutely stoked to have had him on the show. Um, I've, yeah, admittedly, I'm one of the fanboys. And, yeah, I've kind of strayed. I'll be, you know, the first. I've. You know, like I said, I bought some fuel tanks right, you know, because they were the thing. And and then all of a sudden he announced that he was coming out with something because I needed the fuel range. Well, not because me needing the fuel range, but I know I needed fuel range. And then he had a solution for it. So I should have known better. Uh, but if anybody's interested in a set of auxiliary tanks, uh, those will be up on the market soon because uh, I like what he's doing a little bit better. And it suits me a little better for the off-road stuff. So anyway... A uh, lot of great products, a lot of stuff, um, and and for those that have been following the Rottweiler uh, team for a while now, you know that the stuff performs and does what it does, and so that 
uh, absolutely huge. Dino charts to back it up. I mean, everything is there and everything is well designed. So uh, the one question I didn't ask him, but I already knew the answer was going to be a resounding no, is if he does anything half ass. And that is not the case. Everything that he does uh, is absolutely amazing. I'm blown away that that tower was only two days worth of development. Uh, it does not look like two days worth of development. And he solved a problem that will keep a lot of racers safe uh, and injuries in the rally raid side of things uh, for years to come. He like I think that that rally tower, we, we talked about when I saw it and he kind of showed the concept. I'm going, wait a minute. Um, it's absolutely insane. It, uh, it, it's just like it fixed this problem that has been a problem for a long time. So I'm excited to see uh, to see that that side of it grow. Uh, Wes, if you're listening, uh, we, we miss you on the 790 uh, rally bike. Uh, we want to see you back out there on that thing. Uh, the, the, it's just an animal. Uh, the 501 and everything like that, you know, super cool. I mean, the, the bike is absolutely beautiful. If you guys haven't seen pictures, I'll be posting some pictures now uh, on Instagram at chasing waypoints official underscore official uh, of the pictures that I took of that bike uh, down there. And the thing is a work of art. Uh, Alex of Conflict got the MXT suspension on it. The thing is just rad. Look dialed. I mean, it, it's, it, it was an awesome bike. And so is the 790. And I want to see the 790, you know. But, well, the development continues. So, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the show. We're at an hour and a half now. We're going to head and cut it off here. You're going to be listening to this on Sunday morning. Uh, I will be barely on my way back from the Baja 500, but hopefully uh, be listening to it along with you guys. And yeah. So if you haven't already followed us, follow us on Chasing Waypoints underscore official uh, on Instagram. Also on Facebook, we're on Chasing Waypoints. Just look that up. You'll find us there. You'll see the episode posted there. ChasingWaypoints.com is the website. And then you've also got... Uh, the YouTube channel. YouTube channel we haven't done a whole lot with, but that is coming soon. We're going to start doing some more stuff with that uh, once we get back out and riding and doing some ride videos and stuff like that. So I am absolutely excited. This is episode 24 of the Chasing Waypoints podcast, 25 coming in hot here uh, in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, do so. Don't miss any of the episodes. We had Happy Dave on a couple episodes ago. We had Mike Graves last episode talking about the Coda rally and what's coming up there. Uh, so lots of stuff going on. I hope you guys are getting excited about Rally Raid. I hope some of you guys are getting ready to try it. I've already talked to Matthew Glade over at RMS, Rally Moto Shop, uh, about getting that equipment done for your bike. Uh, Chris over at Moto Minded. Uh, if you've got those KTMs and some of the other bikes that he's going to be able to adapt these things onto, I hope you guys are reaching out to these guys and, and getting stuff going. Uh, not a sponsorship video. These guys are just doing good things for the sport and helping people get around. So, uh, Also, the interview with Mason Klein, if you guys haven't talked or heard that one yet, uh, that in the Bivouac episode, that was really awesome talking to him. 19-year-old young gun and rally. Uh, absolutely stoked to see him and hopefully at the Dakar this coming year. I know that's on his game plan right now and what he's trying to get to. So, uh, yeah. So throw him a follow. Find out these guys. As always, I'll put the links in the description uh, of some of the stuff that we talked about, including a link directly to the Rottweiler website. Uh, so you can get in trouble by your significant other. Or, uh, as you heard, they do make alternate invoices for free of charge uh, as long as you're buying product from them. So, anyway, that is a wrap. We will see you guys for episode 25. Until then, stay safe. Shiny side up. See ya.